very good morning lady sheds of teddy bears how we doing hope we're all good <laughs> yeah ted's finished his uh, salmon bagels bless him We all doing Lady Shen's Teddy Bears. Hope we're all good and uh, ready for another show. It's sunny. We are still running a test 4K stream. Hope it's all good. No issues. Let's hope for the best. Fingers and paws crossed, Lady Shen's Teddy Bears. And uh, let's hope for some uh, Milton Hall heavyweight action. And of course, hopefully, we get to see some CV22 action as well. You never know. I thought I put the thumbnail. It's a CV22 Osprey. So I thought I'd tempt fate and put the CV22 Osprey as the thumbnail to, you know, kind of persuade it to take off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks very much, Mayhem Marshy. Thanks, everyone. Very good morning to you, everyone. Lady Shenton, Teddy Bears, Ted Coningsby, channel live here at RAF Mildenhall. How are we doing? How are we feeling? Hope we're all good. It's sunny. That is a good start. That makes a day, right? And that is a good day so far. And uh, just uh, going to tune in to everyone, make sure everyone's all, uh, all good. Welcome to the show. We're all good ladies, shenzo teddy bears. Hope we're all well. My name's Nikos, I'm your cameraman and commentator. And with me, I have our very own squadron leader, Ted Coningsby. Yeah, it's sunny, oh my goodness me. I feel quite chilled out today, man. You know, I feel really, <laughs> pretty chilled out. I'm just trying to keep calm, you know how it is. With, uh, with things, Ted, you good, mate? Ted's good, Ted's, Ted's got his parents here as well today. So we're hoping for a really nice day of flying with the big heavies. Standard, when I got here, we missed some form of movement. It was an arrival of a KC-135. Uh, if anyone's got any um, Mildenhall-related aircraft that you can see on ADSB heading this way, bring up the buzz, bring it up, or, or things that we hope, like um, call signs reach, um, but especially Lager, Hobo, there are guys, there are, they are our aircraft that potentially will come back here. Uh, Hobo and Lager is a call sign for here. Um, the MC-130Js, they're both here that I can see in the vicinity. Normally when there's one missing, um, potentially it'll just arrive. They don't usually show up on ADS-B, so be mindful of them. The Stealth Strix call sign. Ladies, gents, teddy bears, my name's Nikos. I'm your cameraman and commentator. This is our squadron leader, Ted Coningsby. And together, with all of you, my friends and followers, and our spanner flight, together we make up one big giant family. A positive channel, uh, one where you can feel free to um, chat to our um, very experienced crew on our show. Uh, if you've got any aviation related questions at all, uh, talk about aircraft, uh, talk about the base, the history, which I will do as well. If you need to learn anything about the runway and the airfield and the aerodrome, give us a shout. Uh, of course, we'll be happy to help. This is a family friendly channel, so please keep it sweet and neat out there. Our moderators, the Spanner Flight, will, uh, will, will look after you on there as well. So I hope we're all good. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let's have some feedback about yesterday. Uh, what did you think of that? Um, our first 4K at uh, Coningsby. Um, we'll just uh, turn that round nice and calmly. So I'm, I'm in a right chilled out mood. You, go, you know when you're just like, yeah. Yes, um, by the way, we were supposed to be at Milton Hall today, but uh, with the Reds leaving today, we decided to uh, go to uh, Milton Hall. Good shout. So we've got a KC-10 there as well with the CV-22 Osprey. Now we're all doing 
hope we're all good. Uh, yeah, of course, if you've got um, call signs blue or gold as well, they potentially will be coming here, perhaps. Not always, they could be going uh, further on, further afield, but yes, we do get call signs blue. They're normally the ones that um, carry the tow line uh, of particular aircraft back to Lake Anif or further afield. So, yeah, good point, very good. But the actual ones that are here, we've also got Jake as well, but they're the rivet joint as well and uh, if you're wondering why it's called Jake it's due to the uh, donkey they named it Jake I'll have to do some research of history because I found out I can't remember which um, what date it was but uh, it was the United States Army and um, some whereabouts it was I think it could have been in Italy and they, there was a lot of donkeys around the a minefield and the problem was okay it's it's one of those sort of scenarios where okay it's not the fact that the, the, the troops were worried too much well they were worried about the, the the safety of the donkey but it's the fact that they could set off the mine that's the problem so they actually picked up the i think i think this is the story with this if not anyway this bit's true and um, there was um there was uh, donkeys in a minefield and so they decided to carry them um, because obviously they weren't they, they, they'll just get scared and roam around or accidentally step on a mine and of course cause problems so the uh, if I got this right I think the troops actually carried them on their backs and uh, carried them out to safety so win-win there Yes, the Red Arrows are departing for, uh, eventually we'll get to Greece. I think it's Exercise Spring Hawk. They, uh, they will first go to Croatia, I believe, uh, down the Adriatic and head for Greece and Cyprus and potentially Crete as well, because they've got an air show there in Crete. And uh, this is it, they are away now before they come back. And it's to help them with their training um, because of the weather that we have in this country isn't that reliable so they'll be doing their nine ship formations that's their famous diamond nine back on their 60th season around Greece and Cyprus oh yeah I mean Ted what do you reckon mate should we go over there I'm not sure if they have salmon over there mate but we could do something No, the the Ospreys are uh, have been cleared. They've uh, they haven't flown since November, but they have been cleared to uh, to carry out ops. Don't forget the pilots. I haven't had any flying for uh, since November, so they are cleared to go. Don't forget to hit the like button, support the channel. You know how it is. You know how we do it. Hit the like. I've always said it's not like a Facebook or an Instagram post. YouTube will recommend the stream. And give us the support. Any chance of teddy bears? We need it. We're climbing high. To uh, 50k. First stop though, before we get to 50k. It's uh, 47, which hopefully we can get back today. There's a couple of KC-10s floating around. You can also see a uh, C-130. There's, there's quite a few aircraft died about, actually. Probably from yesterday's uh, transit flights. So tow lines. There's a KC-135. Usually over this side... Oh, hello. Is that, is that an optical illusion, or is that actually spinning? Uh, so yeah, usually uh, when you've got heavies on this side, they're not actually from from uh, Mildenhall, they're not based here. Um, we are home of the 100th Air Refueling Wing, Lady Shen's Teddy Bears, along with the 352nd Special Ops Wing as well. There we go, this looks good. Nice C-130. The 
legacy of the Square D lives on from the B-17s from the 100th Bomb Group. That's right, if you know about the history of the 100th Bomb Group, the bloody 100th as they were nicknamed, their legacy lives on here at RAF Mildenhall. That's right, built in 1934, Lady Shenta Teddy Bears RAF Mildenhall. This is a United States, a USAFE base with a lot of history. We'll talk about that later on. Very good morning, Captain A, Tim Gooch, Margot Baxter, Mayhem Marshy. Davey, how you doing? Spanafly, how you all doing, man? Chris Bloxo, how you doing? Hope we are all good. Ladies, gentle teddy bears, we got Colin Brammer, how you doing? Hayley Gilby, how's it going? Maca Maiden. Andy Kitson, yes, there's the uh, uh, Elverdon War. Is it Elverdon? Or oh, Elverdon? Well, this sounds good so far. Brendan Jordan, how you doing? Hope you're good. Stephen Tyrrell, how you going? It is a lovely morning. Sandy Bailey, how you doing? Uh, Chris Austin, hope we're all good. Paul Burrows, how you doing, my man? Hope you're good. Still, we're knowing John Minter, Babs Art. Oi, oi! You're watching the Ted Connigsby channel. We're live here at RF Mildenhall. How's it going? Uh, C-130 that you can see uh, running. Uh, it's not based at Mildenhall. That, that is a pure guess, by the way. It's only because it's situated all the way down there. I could be wrong. Frank Wyshynski, how you doing? JD. Snowy Master 738 Nikos, what is your favourite World War II aircraft? Mine is the Spitfire. Ooh, very good question. Very good question. That is a very good question. I think mine will have to be the uh, Spitfire uh, Mark 9, I think, we're going for. I do like various ones. I do like the Sea Fury. I do like that one. It's got a lovely sound to it. And the P-38 as well. <laughs> the list goes on. And each aircraft had a feat of engineering and had a lot of um, different roles each aircraft each fighter aircraft or at least each bomber aircraft had a very different specific type of uh, niche shall we say just getting to know quite a lot about the uh, short sterling as well that was quite a nice uh, aircraft as well and of course the legendary avro lancaster b-17s also touched my heart as well there they're not. In fact, I just, uh, I don't know, something about the Spitfire, such an iconic jet, uh, aircraft, not jet, sorry, such an, imagine that, a Spitfire jet, uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's such an iconic aircraft. They all are, 
to be honest. You got the, you know, there's so many though, isn't there? Um, for, you know, I don't. For those that uh, that know the channel Inside Out, know that we also uh, do a lot of videos on our past and historic aircraft as well that follows coming across all these wonderful aircraft, such as the P-51. Well, Blenheims, Short Sterlings, Dakota, the C-47, beautiful. Got a members only video coming up soon. If you want to see what it's like inside of Dakota, you can follow Ted. <laughs> I've got, um, we, uh, we went to RAF Metheringham on uh, last Sunday and uh, we, we were allowed inside and uh, we're given a wonderful tour and uh, Ted sat in the cockpit, of course. Wings was for um, oh, I think it was for more speed and turn rate. If I got that right, I think it was for more uh, agility, for uh, a, um, a faster turn rate. I think it was while they clipped wings on some of them. They didn't always do it. It was um, literally for quicker turn rate. I think it was, if I remember correctly, definitely to do with uh, speed. Those that are members of the Battle of Britain Memorial flight uh, would have had news about the uh, Spitfire and uh, the links with uh, Just Jane regarding a particular issue. Uh, that was quite interesting. Fair play to the, the guys at uh, Just Jane, the Lincolnshire Aviation Heritage Centre, uh, for making the BBMF aware of, of a particular issue. That was pretty cool. Oh, we know and yeah Gloucester Meat is the first uh, jet aircraft of the Royal Air Force right beautiful so first generation of aircraft uh, jet aircraft that is Don't forget to support the channel, ladies, gents, teddy bears. Hit the like button and, of course, subscribe to our wonderful channel. We are on our countdown to 50,000 subscribers. First stop, though, 47. We are very close. We are hopefully all, all being well. We should hit that today. All being well, though, and we can't do that without your support. So make sure you uh, click the like button and do subscribe to the channel as well. And if you are subscribed, you've been cleared to, uh, to carry out a touch and go on the uh, notification bell button as this will keep you notified of our latest and greatest videos. Don't forget to just click, oh, go on, get notified on everything on the TCS. You know how it is. Thanks everyone who's tuned in though. Thank you, really means a lot. And uh, I know Milton Hall is a very cheap, it's a very different pace, it's a slower pace, but by no means uh, not entertaining as it can be. And uh, I'm proud of all of you who got us a thousand likes on that one day we just had the one takeoff and a practice diversion from Cranwell's Phenom. <laughs> Amazing to get a thousand likes. Like I said, it really does have a major impact on our channel. 
um, you know, a thousand likes does get YouTube to recognise that there's something going on. Even the buzz in the chats gets uh, gets a buzz as well. We are hopefully going to get a move, uh, bit of movement very shortly. Hopefully, this uh, C130 will uh, depart. You never know. There's plenty of tankers down the bottom. This is big iron heavy Friday, uh, Thursday. <laughs> Speaking of Friday, we will be at uh, Lake and Eve tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think a lot of different designs on wings had different aerodynamics and has a different, a very different effect. Yeah, the distinctive elliptical wings of the Spitfire really, uh, I mean, it's good that we're all talking World War II because there's a lot of connection here, uh, which we will talk about, and the legacy of the Square D and why there's a Square D on the tower, and of course the KC-135s and why there are nose, uh, why there is, um, there are nose art on the KC-135s that were once on the B-17s, because at the end of the day, that was their legacy. It's, it's from the same roots descendants call, call, call it what you will but uh, the legacy lives on here which is absolutely amazing all down to the uh, bloody hundredth the RAF four pavots channel Ted Coningsby channel live here at RAF Milden Hall home of the United States Air Forces in Europe this is where it all happens for air to air refueling around Europe this is team Milden Hall ladies and gentlemen Bears. big shout out to everyone at Milden Hall how you all doing Station was built in 1934, by the way, just to give you a little bit of a taster. Oh, yeah. So, way, way, about seven years before uh, Lake and Eve. So much history with the base, and uh, the very first squadron to be here was uh, 99B Squadron. Again, this is why uh, it retains the RAF title, by the way, it's because it was built as a Royal Air Force base and uh, built in, uh, I mean, it was decided even back in uh, uh, the late 20s um, that they purchased the land because at the end of the day, there was that continental threat. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't long after World War I had finished, but the continental th threat was there. So uh, the land was purchased and uh, 19, in 1934, the base opened. First squadron was 99B squadron with Handley Page Hayford bombers. Uh, even the King, King George the, uh, the Fifth, reviewed 350 aircraft at Milden or nine, in, uh, in, in uh, 1935 as well for the Silver Jubilee, which the memorial tablet is located at built in 562 here. I'd love to see that. If I, I'd just love, if, I had, if I had one thing to just quickly have a look here. I'd love to see that tablet because it, it, I love this because I always talk about things like this and then I get to see it. It's really, really awesome. Uh, there was also um, uh, Welling Vickers Wellingtons with 149 Squadron and several Lancasters. Moonlaw was one of the biggest bomb, one of, not the, but one of the largest uh, bomber stations uh, in, in the country. As it got big, uh, of course, um, Lake and Eve uh, was built in 1940. First of all, as a decoy airfield to protect it, like a fake airfield uh, called a Q site. But uh, later, it was decided as the as, as Milton Hall was functioning, um, it, it needed um, a satellite stations. So Tuddenham, Newmarket, and Lake and Eve were uh, were its satellite stations. Wellingtons and of course the uh, Short Stirlings were here as well, and finally Lancasters. So. 
plenty of aircraft uh, that we can just let our, our imagination go wild and just imagine them along here. Imagine that Afro Lancaster's absolutely beautiful. Five Bomber Group were also stationed here uh, under the command of, shall we say, number four RAF Group as well. These are all bomber groups. So under five group, they would have had the Lancasters. And that was during the, uh, during the 40s. So while, uh, while bomber aircraft Stirlings and Lancasters were here in uh, 1943, not too far from here, is the arrival of the 100th Bomb Group in 1943. Oh yes, RAF Thorpe Abbotts. Now, the 100th air refueling wing that were here, their legacy goes back to way back when. and. Uh, you need to go back to 1943 and you need sorry I'm just listening to that see what it says uh, yeah so uh, 1943 we had the uh, 100th it was uh, United States Army Air Forces and they arrived it's near this and it was their station 139. I've got the, uh, actually got a t-shirt, that's wicked. And uh, what's interesting is that one of the squadrons that fly with the 100th Air Refueling Wing today, their legacy was one of them, the 351st Bombardment Squadron. We have the 351st Air to Air, uh, refu Air, Air Refueling Squadron, which are here today. I love this kind of thing because at the end of the day, the route is there, the legacy, how amazing is it? But it's also interesting to think that their legacy was once an, um, you know, a, a, a bombardment squadron and now they're an air refueling squadron. Bit of a change, right? And it's, and it's here, right, that the B-17s that were flown once, right, in the legacy of the 100th Air Refueling Wing, which were the 100th Bomb Group, their B-17s had the uh, square D. And this is why. Uh, also, just interestingly, um, if you ever see it, I don't know if they have it, but Echo Papa was their, uh, sort of like their fuser of their squadron barking, Echo Papa, but the actual bomb group had the famous square D. And they're the only, uh, it's the only um, World War II tail marking in use today, which is unbelievable, it's amazing. Now they were called the Bloody 100th, not because they, they um, suffered the most losses, it's how many they lost in any one mission. So they were flying the B-17s in the 1943. Of course, the, if you know about the the, uh, the raid at Munster, was one of the worst. Thirteen went out, one come back. Just it was in absolute pieces. Two engines out, uh, lots of flak damage, crew injured, hurt. Unbelievable. But uh, once. Uh, once that, then we need to st talk about the uh, the 100th. They, you know, when they had their last ever, their, uh, their last sortie was actually a humanitarian one, dropping uh, food over. Uh, I think it was uh, definitely Netherlands and I think Belgium as well, and over occupied France. It was their their last sort of uh, mission was a, a humanitarian one. The I know they went to they went back to America, but they also um, had a little bit of a, a rotational deployment at uh, with B-47s at RAF Bryce Norton. That's the 100th, uh, but things think it was like a reserve at the time. They they um, they, re they deactivated, reactivated, but then of course they came back here, and this is why the legacy still lives on. Change of uh, change of scene, change of title. They became the 100th um, air refueling wing. It's amazing when you think about that, because at the end of the day. They brought with them the legacy, which I love about that. And their motto actually is peace through strength. Amazing. And they fly today, the KC-135 Strato Tanker. It's 
So uh, during World War II, as we mentioned, it predecessor was the 100 bomb group heavy. It was part of the 8th Air Force, by the way. Just to give you an idea, the group suffered tremendous uh, losses in combat, uh, with 177 aircraft missing in action, uh, flying, and it flew its last mission on the 20th of April, 1945. Lest we forget, Lady Shenzhen Teddy Bears, lest we forget. You can also see the square D on the B-17s of the 100th. Thank you for everyone who sent me photos of that, of, of the uh, square D on, on X. So yeah, it was in the 50s that they uh, went to uh, New Hampshire, the Peace Air Force Base. And uh, they were assigned the B-47. Well, but things didn't quite work out, especially in the early 60s. So they were deactivated. Uh, they were also, just didn't mention that they were also part of the 100th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing. Very briefly, but again, this didn't quite work out. So deactivation again, until uh, it was decided to give them a new role, which was the air refueling in Europe. We were stationed at RAF Mildenhall on the 1st of February 1992 as well and it was the on the 31st of March 92 the 351st air refueling squadron was activated and assigned to the 100th operations group and as we said the 351st were once the bombardment squadron how amazing is that to have that legacy Thanks everyone for getting uh, putting poppies out. I love that. Thank you for that. That's really nice of you. Chicken oi oi, David Binch, how you doing? Hope we're all good. Hope we're all well. How's uh, Mario and uh, German Army Ted? Hope we're all good. Paul Hallett, hello from DIS. Hello, we've just kind of mentioned DIS due to the uh, RAF uh, Thorpe Abbots. Now there is a museum there. The uh, There is the uh, tower, uh, the traffic control towers there as well. Uh, check it out, it's really good. But make sure you check out on the website their opening times because I think it's just the weekends. I wouldn't want you to go there and it's closed. Margo Baxter, how you doing? Alex Binks, oi oi, Davey, hope we're all good. Richard Pryor, good morning. How's it all going? Pat Galloway, oi oi. Well, you never know, it could be just having an engine run. I haven't got any, any uh, details. Or this one but it's nice to see it move <laughs> and uh, just listening to those distinctive sounds of the Hercules high gear I mean that's had a great great career isn't it the uh, C-130 amazing we get to see this depart that'd be quite nice wouldn't it <laughs> be a shame if it's just an engine run I'm just gonna have a look at ADSB see if there's anything uh, in the sky to arrive
sorry, just had a really cool salute. Oh yeah. Oh, I love it. I love this place. I do like, I do love it. We are quite well known and have a good reputation and a good rapport with the, uh, the Royal Air Force and the United States Air Force here. With our constant respectful ways of doing things. Communication. Hope we're all good, ladies, gents, steady bears. I do hope we do get a departure from this. It'd be a shame if it's just an engine run. It'll be a very different change of pace tomorrow than when we're at Lake Neath. Uh, hopefully, we get some F-35s and uh, F-15 action. Let's ride. <laughs> Let's ride. thank you very much and if you are generous and kind enough to, uh, to give us a, a super chat or a super sticker or gift a membership or take out Ted Coningsby membership you will be rewarded with a Guards Mart shout out Two eight, line up and wait. I think I heard. So I've got my radio in the uh, in the van. I can just about hear it. Should be getting a departure now. I did hear runway two eight, which is a good sign. Which is a good sign. Thanks everyone who's tuned in. Nearly one thousand of you tuned in. Nearly. Thank you very much. Don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe. Let's try and get a thousand likes today again. Beautiful birds that you can hear. It's lovely. It's not a bad day out, is it? Just it's a good thing about plane spotting. It gets you out, although you are exposed to the elements. The, <laughs> oh, the afternoon yesterday was wet, man. Let's get the Herks out. Let's get the Herks out. Here we go. We've got Herks. Yeah, we have. Here we go. Ken Becker, good morning from Texas. Oi oi to you. Oi oi, Texas. How's it going? Look at this! It's the backwards hook. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, get in! I only found this out this year that it could reverse. I know, look at this. Incredible. No way. Is it? You are joking. Is that just reversing all the way back to the... <laughs> I mean, I'm getting excited about an aircraft reversing because it is pretty cool. Not many aircraft can do that. There's another KC-135 that you can see just, just as it's approaching now. And, uh... Again, it's just a guess. I don't think it's part of uh, here. We can find out now. Well, either that's an optical illusion or, or that is fact. About how big a, a KC-10 is. Good 
goodness me, how big is that then? <laughs> I think that I think that's gotta be right because it's closer, it should be bigger, shouldn't it? That's amazing. Am I using runway two way? There's the square D on the tower that you can just about see on the screens there and all. Ladies and Teddy Bears, we are in uh, the uh, John's Field at the Nook campsite. It's two pound per person for the day. Uh, please do take note of the opening and closing times here, ladies and Teddy Bears. And it is two pound per person. And of course, follow the usual housekeeping rules. Please don't climb the fence. Please don't cut the fence. Under no circumstances do you do that. You would be in serious trouble. Uh, don't climb the fence. And of course, please don't fly any drones here. Please don't rest your ladders on the fence either, that can cause damage, please. Of course, please take your litter home. There are, I don't think there's any bins provided. No, I can't see any. But there is a, uh, a, a beautiful little platform that you can stand on as well, just to get you a bit more height. Please take care on there though. There's a protective railing. Hopefully that's for another aircraft, that'd be. Nice chilled out pace here at uh, RF Moonlo. United States Air Force in Europe base, beautiful. And you can get some lovely surprises here. Honestly, you can get some really exotic aircraft sometimes. Look, those uh, two, I think there's three of them, I think. Well, there's definitely two on our screen now. I think there's a third one, which we may get a good view of. I'll just sneak it. Yep, so three KC-46s there as well. Beautiful. I think we've got another NC-130J starting up as well, I think.
Yep, there we go, look at this. Oh, oh. Hopefully it does patterns. I couldn't quite catch what, what they said about the patterns. Hopefully they're just... Sometimes you can get that, you can get the, uh, an, an MC-130J. Now, hence MC-130J, it is a, uh, is a souped up Hercules, and it's uh, MC-130J Commando 2. I'm not actually 100% sure what this one is, if it is an MC-130 Commando 2. Nevertheless, we'll just call it a Herc. Do have uh, I can see it does have um, refueling pods, air to air refueling pods as well to assist with air to air refueling. Pretty cool. Just gonna grab the old camera there now. Just turn around there now. Again, ladies, gents, teddy bears, pretty similar to Lake Eneath. You know, when we see the aircraft just sat there running, everything needs clearance. One could simply not just take off. That's right, constant communication with ground, even on startups. Startups has to be cleared with, um, with tower, and that's using the ground frequency. They change frequencies. You can hear them sometimes. And they change, the pilot changes frequencies. It's really important. They adhere to all the management of tower. So first of all, the ground frequency allows them to uh, confirm startups, gives them all the departure details. Uh, once they're cleared to taxi, they'll switch to tower. Once they've got a lineup and wait. So in that cockpit right now, they have to go by what's called sterile cockpit. No other talking can take place unless it's related to doing their checks and pre-departure checks anything related to the aircraft on takeoff it's a very crucial time it's called a sterile cockpit and that's uh, 10,000 feet below 10,000 feet oh, sorry oh hello Do have another hurt as you can hear in the background so yeah once cleared to depart tower will tell them tell the crew pilot it's ready to go here we go
yeah look at this beautiful right next hook let's go let's ride <laughs> Thanks Davey, much love to you man. Thank you everyone. I, honestly, Spanafly, thank you. Honestly, you say the most nicest things and updating me on the most crucial things, so it means a lot. Hit the like, do subscribe to the Ted Connorsby channel. Come on, let's ride. Hopefully we get loads of circuits. You know, come on. I'd love that. It'd be good. Show, ladies and gentlemen, steady bears. We are on our way to 50k. All right, first stop though, 47k. Let's try and do this. Let's ride. All you got to do is subscribe to the wonderful channel that is Ted Connorsby channel. We are a military only aviation channel and uh, we are a fun, friendly, but serious too. Enjoy. Come on. You know you want to hit that subscribe button. Come and join us. It's free as well. That's what you got to do. Let's do this. Let's ride, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. So this M MC130J is part of the uh, RAF Milden Hall's inventory. And I'll give you more details. So. Let's start off with the wing itself. So the these are special ops, by the way. These are the special, the 352nd special operations wing, Lady Shent and Teddy Bears. How cool is that? Now, um, if we break that down, so the the wing itself uh, falls under the 752nd special operations group. Now, that group they fly the uh, with their seventh uh, special operations squadron. Uh, they fly the the Osprey. And under that group as well, uh, they, the 67th Special Operations Squadron, the MC-130J Commando 2, is what, is what they fly. So, uh, so we are looking at the 67th Special Operations Squadron. That's the 67th SOS. <laughs> awesome. Let's not forget all the support squadrons that falls under that wing as well. Big shout And of course, the Special Operations Maintenance Group. So big shout out to them who deal with that. That's the Air Force Special Operations Command serious stuff they're nicknamed the night owls as well ladies and teddy bears originally activated at RAF Skullthorpe in 1952 as well and, uh, they did transfer to Moron Air Base in Spain in 66 relocated to Woodbridge in Suffolk in the 70s and uh, transferred to Alcabry in 92 and then finally moved to Mildenau in 1995 
usually carry out air to air refueling for the Osprey. Hopefully we see them today. It'd be nice to see them. I, I put it deliberately as a thumbnail to try and persuade them to take off today. Noxy Noxy, how you doing? Liam Ward, how's it going? Alan Burden, good morning. Heather, Michael Woodringe, how's it going? Just uh, scrolling through, see who we got. Don't forget, I can only scroll so far on the chats because it does disappear after a while. Thanks for joining us. In Tree Town, how you doing? Hope you're good. Thanks a lot, uh, Texoma Raven. Got a one, two, three North Street. Yeah, how's it going? All right, hope you're good. Argo, how you doing? Oi, oi. Tal Trassin, oi, oi. We've got N Smiler from New Zealand. How you going? Thanks, everyone. Where you're watching from? Big oi, oi to you. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're watching from. Nice of you to join us. Give us a shout. Yep, Stu Martin, nice one. Whack out the hook. Strix 67. I think Strix, if I got this right, isn't it an acronym for something of what they do? The infiltration. Oh, I'm just trying to think now what Strix. And, it, and obviously, that is uh, Strix 67's the call sign, hence the 67th. I'm pretty sure Strix is pretty much. Uh, that's got me now. I'm just trying to think. Infiltration. Oh, give me a minute. Let me work this out. I'm sure it's something like that. Is it something like Special Ops Helicopter Infiltration? Exfiltration and resupply, or something like that, and, it, and they just call it Strix for short. It, it, I'm, I'm, the, I'm almost there, right? I think it's something like that. <laughs> I'm on the right, I'm on, I'm on the right sort of area, I think, with that. I'm going in the right direction, but uh, I'm not sure how 100% that is. I'm pretty sure because obviously Strix is a particular call sign, right? It's a pretty specific. I, I get the six seven because that'll be the uh, the squadron, right? And then Strix, I'm sure it's kind of like what they do. I wonder if Andy's here to take a mad photo of me with that. <laughs> did, you, did anyone ever see that? That photo of me and the MC-130J, that amazing. It was We featured that on our What A Shot because it was so good. Somewhere in there. So, sadly, it will be that time of year now when we start to get bugs everywhere. <laughs> oh no, the killer mosquitoes at Mordor. Oh, hello. Imagine that, living, there's, a, there's a couple of um, civilian houses around here. Imagine seeing that outside your window. <laughs> That'd be amazing. How's the view, darling? Yeah, it's a delightful Hercules just flying by. Uh, those voices were uh, Nikos generic. They weren't impersonating anyone. <laughs> It's all taxi down to runway 28. Look at this. Is that a man on the back of it? No way! Well, obviously I can't zoom in, but no way! That's proper! Is that a guy just sat there? That is amazing. Skill McGill's. Right, we'll have to uh, wait for that. Well, let's be hopeful for these three. Oh, I can see steps. I can see the stairs. Steps have been delivered. Oh, hello. 
Oh, yes. Is that a Shelby 676 or something? Oh, oh, oh. Did you just hear that? I'm not really a car person now, but... That looked impressive. It sounded impressive. I'm pretty sure that was a Shelby GT 500. I'm pretty sure that was that was uh, 67 Mustang Shelby. I'm sure that is it. Hence Strix 67, I love that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We were just talking about 67. Thanks everyone, 1.2K watching. Thank you, phenomenal numbers for Milton Or, Like I said, it's, uh, you know, it's not back to back or anything, although if it keeps it up like this, this will be quite good. Ted Grimsby Channel, live here at RF Milton How are we doing? Are you safe base? Oh yeah! <laughs> Let's ride! Hello! Oi oi! <laughs> ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, I would have loved to have got you a zoom of that car, but um, being in 4K, uh, yeah, I'm probably, yeah, just mindful about reg plates and faces, that's all, so I've just got to be careful. Obviously, if I do accidentally do that, uh, it's not deliberate. Uh, just a quick Ted Coningsby disclaimer, I'm just uh, trying my best, because I know there's some people here as well, but obviously the base, I've got, to, I've got to look after the base. If I spot anything that I think, oh, no. James Warren, morning. Oi, oi. That's it all going. Roger Anthony Low, oi, oi. Thanks a lot. PHB7, thank you. Nice one, Davey. Smashing out the info. Go, here we go, here we go. There it is down there, there now. I've just got to be careful because there's people actually standing on that platform. Some of them are on ladders, like the, well, you'll see the back of them. Milnall ladies and gentlemen, teddy bear. Oh, look at this. Good shout out to uh, Milnall Fire Department and Rescue Team. How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks everyone who's tuned in today. Welcome to the show.
Richard Freeman watching from Aylesbury, how you doing? Oi, oi. You do get a lot of uh, rabbits and hares uh, playing here. So you get to, oh yeah, actually right there, I can see. <laughs> Look at this, perfect. Yeah, I'll just, oh, there's quite a few of them actually, there's two now, isn't there? Oh, bless them. Thanks, Meth. I will be getting the guards' marches done very shortly. I don't really cause any issues on the runway or anything, usually. I, not that I've seen anything. second Hercules of the day. Usually we get none or a few, which is kind of cool. crows on the bottom to the right of the screen now backwards flying crows what are we going to do waiting for that uh, Chingu to uh, just pass by, could be that, could be other certain traffic in the skies. Craig, you see, yeah, the rain's definitely gone now, for now anyway. And Smiler, oi oi, how are you doing? Put him, Robert, oi oi, Hank, for fuel, how's it going? Hair today, gone tomorrow, <laughs> nice fun show. Thanks a lot, Andy Baker. Oh, we're almost at 47 